Hello, my name is Mark Reed, and today I want to go over my setup with a very capable high pressure compressor called the Young Hing. Most all of you have heard of it if you know anything about air gun stuff, and that's why you're looking at this. If you're considering a Young Hing, certainly do. It's a great unit. It's specifically helpful for filling tanks. It's not designed to fill giant tanks, and it's not designed to you know, be stressed at a very high level. But if you treat it right and stay within the parameters of the way it was designed, you can get many years of use out of a unit that's only $320, $350. It's a great buy if you're in this sport, especially if you're using tanks. So let's talk about it today. My Young Hing setup is probably a little bit different because every single one of us have a different setup for their Young Hings. There are millions of different opinions and impressions and theories and workarounds and everything regarding the Young Hing that you can imagine. And I'm sure you've seen most of that. So this is my personal humble opinion about how I do it. I've had this particular unit for over three years now and it's given absolutely faultless service. I've taken good care of it. And I'll say that after the research that I've done, obviously you know that one of the most important aspects of the Young Hing is keeping it cool. So everything that I've done in my setup is an effort to keep it as cool as possible. The Young Hing is designed to be a water-cooled compressor. So what does that mean? Well, it uses water, and I use this great bucket here to put water in to flow through the machine to, to cool the chamber where the air is being compressed. And so I use ice to cool my water. You'll get a thousand different opinions about that. That's just the, the way that I decided to do it. And it's been, I think, a good decision because it's worked extremely well. It's very important to keep the temperatures down as much as you can control in this machine. And so by using ice, by using air, high flow of air, I think you can accomplish the goal of keeping the machine within a reasonable tolerance of temperature. Most of the temperature ranges that I've seen in my runs, I keep meticulous records, range between usually about 130 degrees up to a very, very max high of 150 degrees that I got once. And that was the longest run I ever did. So generally around the 130 degrees, that's fine for this machine. That's not putting that much stress on it. But if you really push it and you try to fill up a huge giant tank and the temperatures are going sky high, you're not going to have much of a lifetime with this young, with your young hing. So take good care of it from a temperature standpoint and you're going to, we're going to reap the rewards of that. Instead of having the uh, pump that comes with the Young Hing. I went ahead and got a higher capacity pump. This is a 3,000 liter per hour pump that I think costs $25 on Amazon and it does a really good job of circulating the water. I run my pump straight into the lower nozzle of the Young Hing and the output is from the top back into the bucket. Now I'm a believer in ice. I think ice works really well. You probably hear a thousand different disagreements to that or using uh, water coolers, things like that. I think ice works really well and I've got plenty of ice to use. Always go through a checklist before you start your unit with the most important thing to check is your oil level. You don't want the oil to be above the level of the red dot. Mine's right at that upper limit, but you certainly don't want it to be lower than that. So just double check that each time. You'll find thousands of opinions about what type of oil to use in your Young Hing, from Royal Purple to what I use right now, which is Mobile Raris. It's a very expensive oil, but I do think it works better, and it has a, a very good lifespan on it, too. It's a very clean oil. I found mine on eBay, and um, it's not really that expensive for the amount of time that you get to use it. One of the most important aspects of care of your young hing has to do with heat dissipation. And so I've decided to use two high speed fans to help cool off the unit as much as possible. And I do think they've made a difference. This is a computer fan that I got off Amazon that helps keep the upper chamber a little bit cooler, hopefully. 
But I think the biggest thing that I've done to help improve it is using this very high speed blower through the back. I've removed the plastic cover so that it's just open back here. I don't ever put my hands back there. But I turn this fan on high speed and let it flow through the unit. And I do think it's dropped the temperature um, pretty considerably. And I, I like that a lot. Keeping water out of your tank or gun is absolutely vitally essential. And I've gone with a two-tier system, first running into a water separator that I'll bleed about every five minutes. And then that runs into the gold filter full of molecular sieve before it goes into the tank. Now I use a Stickman for my SCBA tank, and I think it's great. That's, that's just a, a terrific device if you have an SCBA. It's expensive, but well worth it. This Young Hing is the type that you can set the pressure before it turns off automatically. And mine will usually stop right at 290 bar. I don't want to go above that for any fill. I don't want to stress a unit any more than I have to. One of the more unusual things that I've done with my system is a way to dampen vibrations as it's running. And so I've sat my unit on a piece of uh, stainless steel with subwoofer springs underneath to help mute the vibrations. And um, I don't know if that has anything to do with prolonging the life of the unit or not, but anyway, I don't think it hurts anything. Another thing that I do regularly that's probably utterly useless and unnecessary is to get as much of the water out as possible. So I'll just use one of these um, computer uh, spray or blowers and use it to clean out as much water from the chamber as I can. And who knows if it helps, but I like doing it anyway. Now, as far as general operation goes, before you turn on the unit, you want to make sure that your bleed valves are completely open so that there's no pressure on the system when it starts. When I start, I usually hit my stopwatch so I know exactly how long I'm doing this. I'll let it run for about 15 seconds or so, and then I'll tighten down these screws, and they'll start building pressure right away. One of the important things to know before you start filling your tank is to know how much pressure is in your tank already. So if you don't have a nice gauge like this stick man, at least find something that you can hook up to a hose, you know, a, a little portable gauge and find out because you need to know how much pressure is in there in order to allow the young hing to build up enough pressure to that amount before you open your valve. In other words, you don't want to open your valve when you turn on the switch of the young hing because all the pressure in your tank, which is greater, will bleed back and potentially damage your unit. So you want to wait till the pressure is about the same. So I'm watching my gauge. I turn it on, let the pressure build, close my valves, uh, close my bleed valves, and watch the needle rise, let's say, for instance, up to 190 bar in this case. As soon as it hits 190 bar on this, I'm opening my valve on my tank so that the pressure is about equal. And then you can watch, um, you know, this gauge, or if you have another gauge like this stick man, you can know when you're there to shut the unit down or automatically turn off. If you take good care of your young hing, I think it's going to last a while as long as you don't overstress it and you treat it the way it should be treated. I have a great white tank that's wonderful, fantastic, gigantic, but I don't want to use this young hing to fill that in one fill. So I'll incrementally fill that over time and I'll just keep it at 12, 14 minute runs until I get to the point where I can fill it up. I decided to go with the young hing primarily because it's a solid unit. If you treat it well, it'll work for quite a while, but also because I think it has advantages over some of the earlier models of the oilless compressors. I think it's hardier. I think it's more able to fill an SCBA tank or a bigger tank than that. The oilless compressors are designed to fill directly to the gun, and certainly you can use a young hung, young hing for that. It's just a little bit more difficult using a young hing to fill a gun if you're using water 
or ice, you know, and all the other things associated with it. I think a, a oilless compressor certainly has advantages, direct filling of a gun. But I'll also say that I didn't want to go with a more expensive compressor like a Bauer or Alkin, primarily because it's expensive. And I love this hobby. I want to invest my money in my guns primarily, but a good compressor taken care of can last a long time. I just made the calculation that if a very good expensive compressor is $3,500, $4,000, which most are, I can buy about 10 Young Hings for that. Now these usually run somewhere between $320 and $340 to $50. So pretty reasonable for the amount of time that you can use these. And um, I think they're fairly well built. I mean, they're not like the most expensive type compressors. I'm not trying to make that comparison. I just think, hey, if I buy 10 Young Hings and I can use one for, I don't know, I hadn't even exhausted this one yet. So four, five, six years, I don't know, something like that. I'm probably not going to uh, live long enough to have uh, got my money's worth out of my very expensive compressor. Fantastic if you have one. Great. I'm jealous. But I think I can get by with the Young King, what I do. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me. I hope it's been valuable. Uh, this is a never-ending learning experience for all of us in this great hobby of ours. And I hope this will be of at least a little bit of help for you. So thank you so much.